All right, today we are going to take a look at Guardian Life Insurance Company, and we're going to look at their new whole life insurance products that comply with the 7702 update. So finally, we've got some numbers to look at. We're going to compare the old product to the new one so we can see the difference with a laser focus on cash value. Let's have some fun and get on into it. So the biggest changes, I'm gonna go through a summary first and then we're going to go through all of this information. The biggest changes when comparing the old product to the new product are as follows. Number one, this is what everyone has been asking about, the guaranteed values. The guaranteed rate has come down specifically with Guardian from 4% to 3%. Their insurance expenses came down as well, but overall we have seen that the guaranteed values on the new products have come down. The upfront cash values and break-even point have been, ex have been extended, so they are not as attractive as they used to be. They're still very attractive, but one thing that I always, always emphasize is policy design and major mutual companies. And if a policy is designed properly with a traditional whole life insurance product, we should typically see between 85 and 90% in cash value in the first year. Now you'll see with Guardian's products, often between 82 to 85%. So now we're below that 85% barrier with how they restructured this product. So we do sacrifice early cash values when I look at the new product, but what I gain then is when I look at the long-term performance based on the non-guarantees, stronger values, just with how they repriced their product and also how the dividend portion is actually credited to cash value, which we'll get into and go through in full detail. And then also, I do wanna build some awareness around their direct and non-direct recognition treatment. Their non-direct recognition treatment is pretty straightforward, but in respect to their direct recognition treatment, they have for a long time now raised the dividend rate on borrowed funds to match the loan interest rate. But where things have changed is that the company now has a lower loan interest rate with their direct recognition treatment. So what will that look like? And we'll see exactly what it looks like as we go through the numbers. So what we're going to look at here is as follows. <clears throat> we're going to assume a case where we've got a 40-year-old male paying in 100 grand per year. Now, as far as the policy design is concerned, we still juiced this thing for maximum cash value. We did look at a number of designs to go with a higher base premium to see if the new change had any impact in this respect with Guardian, meaning will a higher base premium result in greater long-term cash value? And the answer is no. It's even more extreme now where it makes more sense to go with a minimal premium. When I say more extreme now, based on the new 7702 guidelines. So minimum premiums do hands down generate maximum cash value. But we've got a minimum base premium, $10,000, a little bit less than that actually, $90,000 PUA allocation, and a $100,000 MEC limit. So if someone is interested in a cash value life insurance policy, if you said, hey, I'm interested in this product because it is a safe, liquid, tax-free area to position money should produce somewhere between that three to 5% range. The death benefit, I'm not too concerned about right now. My goal is to minimize the death benefit, which minimizes expenses and beefs up my cash value. Now, what I wanna mention here in respect to the death benefit is when we set that policy up, if you said, I wanna be able to pay in 100 grand per year, I would then set the MEC limit at at least $100,000. So you can pay up to 100K per year and still reap the, the traditional tax benefits around the cash value. The death benefit has a direct relationship to the MEC limit on a life insurance policy. And you'll see exactly where I'm going with that and why I emphasize that point. Because with this new 7702 update, one of the big changes here are the MEC limits. As the guaranteed rates go down, MEC limits increase with whole life insurance products. So <clears throat> let's get into it. We've got the old on the left, new on the right. Old, new. First change, we talked about guaranteed values, not as attractive as they presently are with the old product. The guaranteed rate on the old product is 4%, or was 4%. 2022, that'll be off the shelf with all companies. It's been there since the 1980s. New product, with Guardian specifically, they filed their guaranteed rate to be at 3% across the board. 
on all of their products. Now, why I say specifically with Guardian is with this new change, insurance companies have the choice to select a guaranteed rate between 2 and 3.75%. Some companies like Guardian, New York Life just filed 3% for everything. Some companies like Mass Mutual filed different products at different guaranteed rates, which is interesting. I want to be aware of that when I'm looking at different options, whether I'm concerned about death benefit or cash value, because the guarantee has an impact on both. So what this looks like, what I want to touch on here is if you have the old product with a guaranteed rate of 4%, Guardian's dividend rate for 2021 is 5.65%. So if you bought a policy in 2021 with the old, with the old product at a 4% guarantee, you've got that 5.65% dividend. If you decide to go with the new product with a 3% guarantee, you still have that 5.65% dividend. The difference is how the surplus piece is credited. With the old one, You've got a 1.65% surplus on top of the guarantee. That gives you your 5.65% total dividend interest rate. If you said, well, no, I want to go with the new one. Well, what would happen then? I would have a 3% guarantee. Still the total dividend interest rate of 5.65%, which means the surplus piece would then be 2.65%. So it is the same gross dividend rate that is applied. However, how the surplus is treated and also the guaranteed rate, how that is treated is different. So that will impact your overall cash value growth, especially based on the non-guarantees. But we're gonna get into detail on that and look at some numbers too. So main point on the guarantees, I'm at a 3% for all Guardian products with the new product. And right now we have the option to select either. We can select the old one through the end of 2021. Underwriting can take, take some time. So if you are considering it and this one makes more sense for you, when you analyze both, now I'm not saying get into this one right now, as you analyze both, if you're more comfortable with the higher guarantee, underwriting can take some time. So just make sure you give yourself ample time before saying, hey, I wanna lock in the 4% guarantee. Now. MEC limits and death benefit. Here's really what I want to touch on here. With the old product at a 4% guarantee, age 40 male, $2.8 million death benefit gives you a $100,000 MEC limit. With the new product, if a 40-year-old male said, I want the same $2.8 million death benefit, what that would end up doing is giving him a $140,000 MEC limit. Now, if it was a case where the death benefit was not important and that 40-year-old individual, we'll call him Joe, said, well, I just want to be able to put in 100 grand per year. The death benefit's not that important to me. I want maximum cash value. How do you do that? Or what would I do differently? What we would do is based on a 3% guarantee, the needed death benefit is only $2,050,000. That gives you a $100,000 MEC limit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what that means is I need less life insurance to obtain the same MEC limit, which if I need less life insurance, what happens to the underlying costs? They come down a little bit, which can result in greater cash value, especially based on the non-guarantees. And we will look at numbers on this. Now, one thing I want to mention that's very important, and this is not Guardian specific, is do not compare the MEC limits with different companies. We could do that since the 80s because almost all companies with whole life insurance had a 4% guarantee. The guaranteed rate on a whole life insurance product has a direct impact on the MEC limit as well. Can be a complicated formula, but just to spitball it for you, at 4%, $2.8 million gives you a $100,000 MEC limit. At 3%, at that guarantee, $2.8 million gives you a $140,000 MEC limit. At 2%, that's going to be different. It's going to be above $180,000 from a MEC limit standpoint. So there's a direct relationship there. And why I mention that is some companies like Mass Mutual filed their different products at different guaranteed rates. So we will see different MEC limits there. It makes it fun when you're planning and maxing a policy out for cash value. 
But I do want to mention that because it's important, especially if you are in the industry. Do not assume things will be the same as they always have. There will be a difference in that respect when you are going through education and information with your clients. Here's a big change, and this will impact the upfront cash value. Guardian, their PUA fee, so their PUA rider charge, anytime you make a deposit into paid up additions is 5%. That is a gross charge. And we've got a PUA analysis video on that. But here's a big, big change. That has been a leader in the industry. There's one smaller company that does not charge anything for PUAs, but among the big four, like that's a home run. Mass Mutual, for example, their Ailer right now is priced at a 7.5% fee and their Lister is at 8%. So Guardian's always had an advantage with their PUA fees. It's going up to 10%. Now what I'll add here, the drawback to this is this is what is impacting the early cash values. When we get to the numbers, the old product typically credits between 87 and 88% cash value in the first year when it's max funded. The new product will credit between 82 and 84%. The difference is that additional 5% hit. So I will have less upfront, delayed break even point will be between years four and five instead of years three and four. That's the drawback and we're gonna pull up numbers so you will have some visuals on that. The advantage, however, is when an insurance company charges more upfront on the paid up additions rider, that is typically a direct play of enhancing the long-term performance of a product, especially on a non-guaranteed, from a non-guaranteed standpoint. We've seen some companies successful with that and I do understand it just from talking to them and looking at the actual formulas, but at the same time, I like to look at actual performance as well. And that's why I like the four major mutuals and well-designed policies. But anyway, we will look at that when we analyze the numbers. Before we look at the numbers, I wanna to touch on one more point here. Loan interest rates. With Guardian, they offer a fixed interest rate of 6%, which eventually drops to a fixed interest rate of 4%. Here's how it works though. Today, I'm 33 years old. If I take a policy out today, I will have the fixed loan interest rate of 6%, assuming the, it's the old product. That 6% is locked in until it drops to 4%. It will drop down to 4% at either age 65 or 20 years into the policy, whichever comes last. So if I'm 33, what happens last? I turn 65, or 20 years from now. 20 years from now, I'll be 53 years old. I would still have the fixed loan rate of 6%. At age 65, I would get that fixed rate of 4%. If I was 50 when I started a policy, at that, six, at that fixed rate of 6%, age 65 or 20 years, which comes last 20 years when I would be 70, that's when the rate would drop down to 4%. So that's how the old product works if you keep the fixed rate. Now all policies start with a fixed rate. At the 10th policy year, one does have the option to change the loan interest rate to a variable loan interest rate. If you do that, the policy one is no longer direct recognition, it changes to non-direct recognition, and you have a current rate and floor of four and a half percent. A lot of information there. Works exactly the same just with different interest rates now. So with the new product, Guardian will have a fixed loan interest rate of 5%. And that's the case until age 65 or 20 years, whichever comes last, at that point in time, the fixed rate drops to 3%. Now, if I elect at year 10, this, if I elected at year 10 that I want the variable loan interest rate and the policy to be changed from direct to non-direct recognition, well, the variable loan interest rate has a current rate and present floor of 4%. So it would go down in that respect. So I see the rates drop about a full point on the fixed rates. And one thing I've noticed about Guardian, that age 65 fixed rate drop, they're always matching that to the guaranteed rate. And that's a nice advantage when I'm taking income from a life insurance policy and looking at conservative numbers, the guarantees for, for instance. So it's good to be aware of that. So a lot of information here. Let's look at some numbers. What we will start with is this guy. We're gonna look at a 
five-year funding option. Now, we did run options where we paid into the product for five years and then also forever. So we ran a number of, op of options. What I want to do here is just look at a five-year fund because that will maximize the internal rates of return on the guaranteed values, dividend values, and indexed values. We're going to look at all three. We're going to look at those first, and then we will progress into some loan scenarios to see really that impact of that direct recognition treatment. So let's get into it. <clears throat> Begin, beginning with the guarantees, old product on the left. I'm going to circle this in red. What do you notice? Old product, guaranteed values. 100K per year for five years. Let's isolate the first year because this is what everyone's going to notice because it's your money going in and you see and feel it today, the impact. 100,000 goes in. You've got about 89% right off the bat in this example. $2.8 million death benefit. Where we came up with that oddball number, that gives us a MEC limit of almost exactly $100,000. Internal rate of return. So we have a dividend rate of 5.65% in this example, yet your IRR is negative 11.25. As we look in yellow, we have the break even point. It is just about year five. You've paid in 500, you've got almost 498. Keep in mind, this is the worst case scenario example here, guarantees. As time passes, there's your cash value, continues to grow. Looks good, annual internal rate of return. The annual IRR isolates the net growth rate after all of the insurance expenses each year, one year at a time. Whereas the average IRR factors in the average. So over the past 10 years, I averaged X amount. In this example, in 10 years, I averaged 1.78%. 15 years, my 15 year average, 2.37%. Let's progress on to the new product. First year, what do you notice here? Same product, same design, same minimum premium, they're to the penny actually. $9,091 and one's in two cents, the other's in and, and three cents. So as we look at the new product here, same out of pocket, the base premiums on these two are identical. The MEC limits are identical. So the death benefit is less here at the same 100K MEC limit though. So that lesser death benefit with the new guaranteed rate of 3% gives me the same $100,000 MEC limit. So I reduced the death benefit to reduce costs and plow more money into cash value. But look at your first year. What do you notice here? Just about 84%. This guy was almost 89%. In fact, look at your IRR. What is it in the new one? Negative what? 11.25%. What's it in the new one? The old one, 11.25. New one, 16.27. What's the difference there? 5%. What was that difference in that PUA rider charge? 5%. That's exactly what that hit is right off the bat. Year two, I pay in 100, get most of it back. I'm at negative 3.56. These are the guarantees as well. This guy has negative 1% that year, meaning I got less than the 100K I paid in. So as I look at this guy, <clears throat> when's my break even? Between years eight and nine, which, is still fantastic for a dividend paying whole life insurance product without dividends. These are worst case scenarios based on the guarantees. That is still very strong. Guardian's always been among the strongest with the guarantees. I'm expecting that to still be the case. So that gives them a, a nice advantage there at a 3% guarantee. That's impressive. That's kind of what I was hoping for somewhere in this range and they did just that. However, with the 3% guarantee, Remember the guaranteed rate and dividend rate, is that a net rate? No, it's a gross rate. The IRR gives us the net. Do you notice a difference? I do. 2.57 on the annual IRR compared to this. 3.34, big difference. Average IRR as time passes. Do we see a difference? Yes, let's look at the 30 year mark. <clears throat> There's your IRR difference, 
2.73 on the average for the old product. New one, 1.86. And here's your cash value difference. $225,000 less in cash value based on the guarantees with the new product compared to the old product. That is the drawback right there. Lesser guarantees than what the product used to have. And that 4% guarantee has been intact since the 1980s. And yes, there's been changes, mortality table updates, but still, that's the big drawback. So that was the drawback, the lesser guaranteed values to the new product. What's the advantage though? So the advantage is really going to be in the non-guaranteed values, call it the potential. I'm giving up what's guaranteed for the potential of greater long-term values. What does that potential look like? Well, it looks a lot better as we get into it, but here's what I'll state, and this will be the case with Guardian, this is my personal opinion, and really my opinion with all of the major mutuals, is that three to 5% net IRR and cash value over time, I'm really expecting that to stay exactly the same. Just in looking at how their products can still be designed, the premium and PUA limits have remained identical, can design it the same fashion with a MEC, from a MEC limit standpoint, a lot of similarities, just different guarantees and different loads as well, PUA rider loads that is. So, old product on the left. Dividend rate, 5.65% gross. What do you notice here? 88 to 89% in the first year, break even point between years three and four. Compared to the new guy, what do you notice here? About 84% in the first year, so that's the hit. Year five, what do we notice? Break even point. Year four, it's not between the two. I'm at 390, I've paid in 400, I've got 390 by year five, I've paid in 500, I've got 502. But the old one, it's split down the middle <laughs> as far as breaking even between years three and four. So that's the kind of stuff I like to look at to really just be on point to say, when's my true break even? Because a lot of people value that kind of stuff if they're going to purchase a policy for high cash value life insurance. It's important to them. Make sure we talk about the things that are important. So after five years, we pay nothing. <clears throat> There's the cash value performance. And check out the IRRs here and compare them to this guy. So the annual IRR, tops out at about 4.14% on the old one, tops out at almost 4.8% on the new one. As we look at the average, you will see that pull ahead as well. So by increasing really their PUA load, that has really helped the long-term performance on these illustrations. When you look at companies that illustrate great long-term values, they often have less upfront because they have higher PUA loads. That's one of the reasons they project great long-term values by taking more upfront with that higher PUA charge. So Guardian has shifted their product where you can still get decent long-term performance. I mean, de decent early cash values in my opinion, very strong actually, just decent to what was available in the past. As I look at this, year 30, there I go. 4.17% average IRR and almost $190,000 more in cash value. Now, of course, as the years pass, we're gonna keep our finger on the pulse of the company, the industry, the products, measuring the actual performance, but the companies have been able to, or the vice grips call it relucent in terms of that high guaranteed rate of 4%, the low interest rate environment, by allowing them to decrease the, the guaranteed rates, cut insurance expenses, that should result in greater long-term performance, or at least it makes it easier for them. The index feature, which I won't spend a ton of time on, we've got content on this, projects beautifully, but it's indexing, so it's all hypothetical, but it does look good over time. I mean, look at the average IRR north of 5%, and it could realistically do that too. I mean, this is based on a, on a semi-conservative illustration, but at the same time, it could not do that. But you can go back and forth with the dividend and index feature if you decide that's something you like. So that is a nice comparison, old versus new, looking at the guaranteed values, dividend values, and index values. Let's wrap up with the loan treatment and specifically the direct recognition. Non-direct recognition, we're not gonna touch on in this video, only because 
things are the same when I borrow and repay, so we don't have to go through that. Let's go through the old product first. So with Guardian, old product, and you can tell from the left, it matches everything we've looked at. So you've got a dividend rate of what with Guardian? 5.65%. Loan rate of what? 6% with the old product. So we've got that higher loan interest rate here. Here's what happens. When you take a loan, so there's your 300K loan. Direct recognition means that the company is going to recognize the fact that you take out a loan and apply dividends, dividends differently. So on unborrowed cash value, you still receive the 5.65% rate. On loaned dollars, you took 300,000 out, you have a 6% cost to borrow. It's a little bit less in this example because Guardian bills interest up front, and if we pay it, we do get a discount on the rate. But here's really where I'm going with this. You still receive a dividend on borrowed funds, but what Guardian does is adjust the dividend rate to match the loan interest rate. So of 6% in this case, on borrowed dollars. So what that means is when we pay it back, when we loan and then repay, I'm at $875,000 compared to the example where you just let it sit and grow, and what's the difference? $871,000. Minor difference because it is a minor spread, but at the same time, I see with a direct recognition company, I borrow and repay, and I have more money in cash value than what I would have had if I just let it sit and grow. This is with the old product. Let's look at the new one now. You're at 875 when you borrowed and repaid. And actually, we can see this. Before we move on, look at your dividend. Year 10 when you took the loan out, compared to the example when you did not. I'm sorry, year 11. 5,000 compared to 6,000, because you received that enhanced dividend rate on borrowed funds. Progressing on to the new one. First year cash value, there we go, just about 84%. Here's what I want to touch on. We take out the loan, same thing. The dividend rate is exactly the same, 5.65%. The loan rate with the new product is not exactly the same. It is 5%. So what this means is the dividend credited to borrowed funds, Guardian's practice, incurred treatment is this, 5%, a lesser dividend on borrowed funds. So if I just let it sit and grow, what do I see here? $913,000 in cash value. Look at your age 50 dividend, $13,980. Look at the dividend column on the example when you take that $300,000 loan out, $10,500 dropped. When I pay it back, I see my cash value restored but not to 100% of what it otherwise would have been, 878 compared to the 913. Now what's interesting is that's still higher than the direct recognition example with the old product because dividends are higher now as far as the non-guaranteed performance. But that's the kind of stuff I wanna have awareness, awareness around upfront. So note this was a lot of information and we did not provide everything by any means, but hopefully you found it informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out anytime. I do hope this helps. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.